Hey gang, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, welcome. And hit the subscribe button so that way you can be updated when I release other videos. In today's painting, we are gonna be doing a wolf eye. And it's actually a lot of fun. We're gonna work on our layers, um, overlapping a lot of our colors to kind of build the fluff, the fur of our wolf and give some nice intensity to the wolf eye. You will notice that I've introduced a new brush into this series and it is the angled brush. If you happen to have that, great. If not, you can always use just a straight flat brush and still do the same brush stroke that I'm gonna show. So again, utilize what you have at home. So in this video, what you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And that supply kit is everything that you need to create this particular painting and the colors that I use in this painting. And also kind of what that angled brush looks like and where to acquire it. So take a look at the supply kit. And then the next thing that you wanna look at is there's a link for a traceable. And a traceable is a way for you to get that initial image and composition on your canvas before you even start painting. And especially for my first time painters, the traceable is a really good tool to utilize to take out some of the intimidating beginning steps of painting. So take a look at that traceable, acquire your traceable, and then also check out the video on how to transfer your traceable to the canvas or panel. And you wanna kinda of do all your prep work, get your supplies, get your traceable all set up, um, and then move on to the next portion of the video. With this video and anything that I teach, I encourage you to make it your own. If you wanna switch out colors, go right ahead. If you'd like more of a white wolf, use more shades of gray. If you want more of a brown wolf, you'll utilize your shades of brown a little bit more. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I do my best to kind of reply to those within a day or two. Um, or send an email, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com um, and I'll help you with switching out the colors. As we go through the painting process and as we go through any creative process, have fun, relax, remember to breathe. Um, this is not the end of the world, it is just a painting. And one of the things that I want you to notice is that you will be more relaxed at the end of your painting than you are at the beginning of your painting. And for my first time in beginner painters, that's something that I want you to focus on as you get into the groove of painting because you do get more comfortable and better with the process the more that you paint. So I encourage that you paint on a monthly basis. Um, I've got quite a few videos and then there are tons of amazing YouTube videos out there to keep on painting. So again, just slowly build your comfort level with these tools and you will impress yourself. Um, all right, so I think that's enough talking. Let's jump into painting and get started. All right guys, so hope you're ready to paint. Go over to where you have your setup and turn on your favorite music and get all your supplies together. As always, make sure you take your progress photo. And once you have your traceable transferred to your canvas, uh, we're gonna use our small pointy brush and black paint. And we're gonna be outlining a few areas and then we're also gonna use some dark gray or medium gray to define a few other areas. And the reason we have the two colors because it's gonna help um, where we're gonna be placing some of our other colors as we go through the video. Now, as you're working with your brush, kind of play with the pressure of your brush. Try pushing it a little bit harder against the canvas for a wider line. Try a light pressure for a skinnier line and just start developing your comfort level with this tool. Now on the eye, you can actually see that I filled in the pupil and left kind of that white circle, that catch light. If you happen to paint over that catch light, don't freak out. We can reapply it at a later step during the painting. Now I'm moving into a medium to light gray. So you're going to take a little bit of your white and add a touch of black. And we're going to be going over these other lines. And again, it just kind of helps... Um, us place where we're going to be placing some other colors as we go through the video today. And don't stress if some of these lines, you know, aren't completely filled in, if you can see the texture of the canvas. We're just kind of getting our placement here. 
they're not going to be permanent. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to start with the, mini, the small flat brush and black paint. And we're going to be outlining the eye, filling in more of the kind of the eyeliner around our wolf, and we'll be placing this in a few other areas. And we're going to be working our way from our dark colors backwards to our light colors. And as we go through the process today, I want you to just relax. Don't take yourself too seriously. And I do want you to trust your instincts. As we go through the process today, if you're inclined to put a color in a place I don't put it, go ahead and put that color there. Anything that you don't like as we paint today with acrylic paint, you just let it dry and paint right on top of it again. So it's a very versatile medium for my first time painters. So now we're making a dark gray and that was white with uh, some black or uh, pull your black aside and add a touch of white to make a dark gray. And we will flip back to the other angle. I had some technical difficulties and I lost some video footage while I was filming this. So when we get to the feature where it says pause the, the video and take your progress photo, at those pause sections, I want you to kind of study the shapes and the places that I put each color. And you do your best just to kind of mimic that placement. And as we're applying these dots today, I want you to imagine that each dot is like a uh, strand of fur on our wolf. And you can see here that some of my dots, I can see the texture of the canvas. They're not fully super opaque. Um, I'm going to encourage you to paint a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with today, just because it's going to fill up that space and cover the canvas. And as we go through the whole painting, we're going to be working on overlapping all these dots as we fill up that canvas space and then overlapping the dots to kind of create a depth in the fur and a fluffiness to our wolf's fur. So again, you're doing a good job. If you're holding your breath right now, take a deep breath for me. Just relax. We're just at the beginning of the painting. And the fact that you are actually sitting here and painting, uh, painting at home, I applaud your efforts. You're doing great. And again, we're going to flip to the other angle when we pause the video. And again, you can look and see exactly where everything was placed. So here's that point. Pause your video, take your progress photo. And we're going to use dark gray which was the same color we were just using. So that was black with a little bit of white. And if you happen to need to make this shade a couple of times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade of gray each time. You will notice that we do go through a good variety of grays and uh, raw sienas and burnt sienas today. So now we're going for a little bit lighter gray. And again, in that same pile that I was mixing the colors, just adding more white to go kind of step down from the color I was just using. And I want you to do the same thing. Just add more white to the gray you were using so that way you're going a few steps down from the color that you were using. Again, we're still working with those dots, those overlapping dots. And I'm literally just kind of stabbing the canvas um, with my small flat brush. And here you can even see where I overlap some of the other shades of gray. Again, you have permission today to get expressive, to get sloppy, to paint outside the lines, to just have fun. You'll actually find that the kind of the faster that you paint and the little bit sloppier you get, you may have a little more fun, especially if you're one of my beginner and first time painters. Um, it's kind of fun to do all the things you may not supposed to do with paint, just so you can kind of get your comfort level. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and now we're going to grab our burnt umber, still using the exact same brush and the same dots. Um, my burnt umber is a student grade paint, so it is a bit more transparent compared to artist grade paint. If you are using student grade paint and yours is transparent like mine, I'm going to encourage that you apply your paint a little bit thicker, kind of glob it on there, and we get a little bit more opaque uh, coverage with the thicker paint. But we're also going to be doing a couple of layers on this. So we will be putting another section um, on top of these dots 
a little bit later on in the video. All right, so keep going. Apparently I have all the wrong info in all the wrong areas. You're doing a good job. Keep breathing, keep painting. Don't analyze too much of what you're doing. Just kind of follow along and, and don't think about it too much. We overthink way too many things in this society and this is not one that you need to be doing that right now. This is more about an experience and a practice of getting more comfortable with your brush strokes with mixing the paint and with the brushes. All right, another place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna be moving into a medium burnt umber. So we're taking some white and mixing our burnt umber with it. And we're going about equal parts, one to one ratio. And again, still sticking with those dots. You are gonna be making so many dots today. Uh, this is called pointillism, where we're overlapping a lot of the dots and keeping with a consecutive uh, brush stroke or mark making. And if you prefer any of the colors today that we're using more than another and you want to fill up more of your space, more of your fur area with one color, go right ahead. If you want to make this a white wolf, you can do this whole thing with various shades of gray and just kind of swap out some of your darker and medium grays with the umber colors I'm using. If you feel like getting like making a psychedelic wolf and using purples and yellows and light blues, please do that and send me a picture. Email a photo to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com because I really like to see um, I like to see what you guys create, but if you really go off the beaten path, I really want to see uh, how creative you let your imagination get. All right, so we're gonna pause the video, take another progress photo, and now we're gonna go for a very light burnt umber. And again, I just added more white to the palette and just mixed in a little bit from my last color I was just using. And we call these steps down, step down in gradients as we mix our colors. And the more that you paint, the more comfortable and uh, instinctual you will get with this process. So we're using that light burnt umber, small little dots overlapping, and we're gonna be filling in a good portion of the remaining space of our canvas. And if you happen to have some white areas showing in between some of your dots, just use this color and kind of fill that space in because we're gonna repeat these colors with a second round of layers um, after we fill in our canvas space. So you will get kind of in a groove of making these dots. So every two or three brush strokes or two or three dots, you will notice that I go back to the palette and grab more paint. You will get in a good groove of doing these dots. So don't forget to grab more paint so you're actually applying something to the canvas and not just going through the motions. All right, you're doing good. Hopefully you're not painting as fast as my time-lapse video is going right now, but I do want you to pa paint at a fairly brisk pace, just because I don't want you to get halfway through and just quit and never come back to the painting. So do try to finish this in one sitting. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna move into the eye color. And we're gonna use the small pointy brush and yellow paint, and we're gonna fill in that entire shape that kind of entire crescent moon shape of the eye if you happen to overlap some of the black totally okay and i do want you to apply the yellow kind of thick so that we have a nice kind of buttery creamy consistency and we're going to do a bit of a dry brush blending so now you're going to actually clean your brush pretty good you're going to grab just a touch of your green a little bit of green and yellow are going to go a long way and at this point, less is more. So you wanna grab just a touch of that green and up in those corners, apply that, and then you're just gonna move your brush into the yellow. And again, a very light pressure. And you're playing with the transition between the two colors. 
Now we're going to do that exact same thing with white. So I grabbed a chunk of white, kind of put it on top of the yellow, and then wiped my brush off with any excess paint. And now just using a light pressure to blend that white into the yellow. And each one of you is going to kind of find a different balance at making this happen. So if you need to reapply the white a little bit thicker because you lost it as you moved your brush between the two, go right ahead and do that. All right, so take your progress photo and we're going to go to our uh, angled brush or your small flat brush and we're going to grab the burnt umber and we're going to be using just the end of this brush and making these little dash marks and the dash marks are kind of going in the direction of the fur and you are overlapping these on top of your other burnt umber colors and on top of the other colors that are surrounding it. We are creating a contrast and depth by layering some of these darker colors on top of our lighter colors and then coming back and putting lighter colors on top of it. So one of the things that I tell all my classes is you guys are magicians. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. And to create some of those illusions, we do some kind of illogical things. Because that's what makes us magicians. All right, so still using that burnt umber, uh, making those uh, kind of angled brush strokes with just the end of that angled brush. And you can see that as we overlap this darker color on the white, we're starting to get some more depth, some transition spaces. Uh, it focuses in more towards the eye. And all of this mark making is kind of directing the viewer's eye as to where we want it to look. And, you know, obviously it's an eye painting, so we are focusing the viewer to look at the eye of our wolf. And each of these brush strokes reinforces the subtle nature of drawing attention to that area. All right, and again, if you want to put this color in more places than I do, go right ahead. If you want more of a brown wolf, you know, you can use a lot of this color and not leave so much white. If you want more of a white wolf, then maybe you paint with more shades of gray. All right, another place for a progress photo. And we're going to move into our medium burnt umber. And again, overlapping using that angled brush, these little dash marks um, for each brush stroke is a strand of fur. And again, I'm going to be putting it on quite a few of those light areas. And if you really kind of get into this, you can do this, these overlapping brush strokes and these um, second batch of colors that we're going through as many times as you want. You know, even after we get finished with the painting, maybe you want to go back in with your dark colors or your lighter highlights of white. It is your call when you want to stop the layering of your fur strokes. All right, doing a good job. If you happen to be holding your breath, laugh a little bit. Breathe, relax. Hopefully you are so focused on your painting that you have forgotten that the world exists outside, even if it's just for a couple of hours. All right, there's another place for a progress photo. And we're gonna move into our raw sienna, still using that angled brush and just kind of um, using those dash marks again for our fur. And do take note as to the direction that these angles are going around the eye. If you are a first time painter, don't stress too much about the direction of these brush strokes. Just kind of focus on the color and applying it in the shape that you see that I put on here and just get comfortable with your brush. I'm gonna encourage everybody to keep your progress photos and in a year from now, look back at some of your beginning paintings and you, it's wonderful to have a visual documentation of how much you've learned and how much you've grown over the course of a year or the course of whatever time frame. So pause the video, take your progress photo, and go back and reference these photos in a year from now. So now we're moving into white paint. 
still using that angled brush or your flat brush, whichever one you have. And we're using our white paint and going pretty heavy handed with this because our white has to kind of compensate on top of these darker colors now. So every two or three brush strokes, grab more white paint and you are putting it on kind of thick. And again, overlapping the brush strokes that are there. Um, the brush strokes that are already on there. Don't be afraid of uh, not having your colors touch. The overlapping brush strokes is the key to making fur believable and kind of giving a direction of where the fur is moving. Next time you take your progress photo, I want you to study it on your phone for a little bit because when you look at your picture on your phone, it's the same thing as looking at your painting from 20 feet away without getting out of your chair. So it's a way to kind of gauge your painting from a distance uh, while you're going through the process. I'm also going to encourage you to get out of your chair and walk 10 to 20 feet away from your painting and look at it from the actual distance. And about 20 feet away is the normal viewing distance for looking at artwork or kind of things in general. All right, so still using that white paint. Kind of pretty heavy handed on some of those eyebrow marks and different little areas. You can be as heavy handed or as light with this color as you like. You're doing good. Look at your painting. How does it feel to you? Where do you need to draw a little bit more attention? If you want place where the white stands out more, then you have to put some darker colors on top of that and then put the white on top of there. If you need a shadow area, go back to your black or your burnt umber and put that darker space back in where it needs to be. And again, by putting that dark space next to a lighter area, that gives us that magical depth on this flat surface that our eye interprets when we look at it. All right, you're doing good. Another thing I tell all my students is when you are done with the painting, put this on the wall and don't look at it until tomorrow morning while you're having your coffee. Because right now your brain's actually remembering how much work that you've been putting into this in the last couple of hours. And your brain's not really nice to you. It wants to tell you all the things that you did wrong. So put it on the wall. Don't look at it till tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, your brain's going to see it fresh. It's not going to remember the amount of work that you put into it. And you should be very impressed with yourself for what you accomplished. And again, for painting at home, I applaud you. It takes a lot of courage. I'm proud of you. And I look forward to developing more and more painterly skills with you as we go through these videos. Take uh, Pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna go back to that small pointy brush and black paint. We're gonna go back to the eye, do a little bit more eyeliner and add some more shadow values. So again, small pointy brush, black paint, going around the perimeter of the eye. We will go back over the pupil um, and a few other areas around the eye socket. Again, this just kind of cleans up the shape of the eye, gives us a bit more contrast as we're looking into the eye. All right, so we're going to make kind of a medium to light gray and a few more details around the eyes. Again, these are going to be kind of short, choppy little brush strokes. So utilize that pause section and just kind of see the general area that I place these. And I'm using kind of light pressure. 
Be kind to yourself as we're getting towards the end stages of the painting. You've made it this far already. You're doing great. And thank you so much for painting. I am honored that you took time out of your day to spend it with me for an hour or two. And just the fact that you sat down and painted for yourself. Good job. I uh, hope you have a great day. And I look forward to painting with you again. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your wolf eyes turned out really cool. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me, paint with lovejoy, or send me an email, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it gets me really excited to see what you guys create at home, um, how much of the video you follow along. Um, I just, I really like to see your progress because it gives me encouragement to make more videos and keep this going. So your feedback, your pictures, your input is very important. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Um, help get my numbers up there, share it with other people, help me grow because it is through you guys that I'm going to spread and get bigger and be able to help more people with the painting process. Uh, I think that kind of takes care of it. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I look forward to painting with you in the future. And I do hope that you find a monthly time frame that you can paint once a month. So have a great day. Have a great week. Until next time. Cheers. If this is your first time here, make sure we don't have planes going over. <laughs>